Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back once again to a special edition of DM Radio. Yours truly, Eric Cavanaugh here. Can't do a show without promoting Future Proof now in a dozen markets coast to coast. Check your local listings for the world's first made-for-TV webinar series all about how today's technology designs tomorrow. So today, good AI versus bad for anti-money laundering, know your customer, and fraud. He, here are our guests. Yours truly, Matt Vega, Chief of Staff and Fraud Fighter at Sardine AI, and Mark Madsen, of course, of Third Nature. Black hats, white hats, what's going on out there, folks? We're talking about how AI, in particular generative AI these days, is a dastardly tool for the bad guys. They can mimic whole websites while you're sitting there drinking your coffee and make you think you're entering your password into Chase Bank, but you're not. We'll talk about that today and learn more all about how you can stop that, learn how AI for the good guys is enabling you to tackle tremendous amounts of data, processes, understand what are significant alerts, which aren't, and how to optimize your time of your team, because it's obviously really important stuff. It's hard work. A lot of it is very tedious. AI can help with all that. And with that, I'll hand it over to you, Matt. Go ahead and share. As we are, uh, you know, <laughs> as Eric was just mentioning, we have a variety of new uh, kind of AI attack vectors call it the black hat uh, type effects. And we're gonna demonstrate some of those and then talk about all sorts of interesting stuff in the industry happening today and uh, how this is uh, how this can impact everyday, uh, everyday people to small, large businesses, to international corporations. Um, and I'm gonna demonstrate one of those uh, live, hopefully. And what we're gonna do is just bear with me here. We're gonna actually prompt a, um, a, we're going to emulate a website. So basically, this is going to be designed for a phishing attack. Sometimes this is known as man in the middle attacks. And what these are is basically it's an individual or organization that um, goes and creates a copy, or in some cases, it's a really bad clone. In some cases, it's a really good clone. I'm going to show you the really, uh, the really good and effective way to do this. Um, and we, we, like, literally, I'm going to show you what bad actors are doing. They're going to, um, we're going to pick a Japanese bank in particular, only because I was just in Tokyo and uh, fell in love with the city. So I'm just going to use that as an example. It, it, this technique works on every website, every company. So by no means are we targeting this particular bank because of weak controls or anything like that. It, it would work regardless of you know what type of uh, security system you're using or controls you're using. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to use an AI tool to basically convert just from a screenshot and actually go from a screenshot directly into um, creating an ex almost an exact replica of it. Um, and so that should be very interesting, and we're going to dive into that right now. And here's, I'm going to share my screen. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, emulate a bank, and um, we'll, we will use uh, SMBC Japan. And so um, this is a large international, um, it, large international financial institution. Um, they are absolutely massive. They're a you know world class bank uh, based out of Japan. Um, you know, pretty pretty large. It's, call it it's the Chase of Japan, right? Um, is is what we're going to use here. And all we're going to do is we're going to take an exact screenshot of this bank in real time, as you can see. And um, I am going to take, including some of that Americas, et cetera. And what we'll do is, let me see if I can even go one level deeper here. And perfect. So what I wanna do is you can see this actually has a, uh, a login portal. This has some sort of a login flow. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to V0. Um, so this is a V0 by Vercel. This is a world-class AI platform. This is, uh, I'm showing what AI could do on the dark side. However, there's a lot of positive benefits, which we'll talk about as well. Um, so by no means is, is V0 a net negative. It's just showing that these are some of the attack vectors that people are using AI for. So in V0, we are literally for free. As you can see, I'm not on a paid program. I'm not doing anything special. And we are going to say, um, create me a copy um, of this website and create a login portal. 
Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to upload that screenshot that I took. And that screenshot is right here, hopefully. And there it is. Upload it. Um, and now we are going to run it. And so what's going to happen um, is this is going to run in real time. It's going to start creating um, all of the different uh, formats and things that are needed. And one second here. And let me just make sure this uploads effectively. Uh, so bear with me here. There we go. There we go. Great. So now it's going to actually take that screenshot and it's going to create an exact replica of it. It's going to actually create, um, you know, in some cases, an enhanced version of it. It actually will create databases for you. It'll create login flows. And what bad actors are doing is they're using AI to basically emulate real websites and then um, actually create fake login portals. And then they will fish individuals for um, information. So for example, I can then take this once when it's completed and I can actually, um, I can send it to individuals. Let's just say I was, if I was emulating Chase, I can send it to you, uh, Eric, as you, as you mentioned earlier, that that's uh, you know, one of the financial institutions that you like as well. And, um, and I can say, you know, hey, we see some uh, suspicious activity. Do you mind uh, logging into your account? And here's a link. <laughs> so there you go. So V0 just ran. Um, and, and basically, as you can see, it's got copies of Americas. It's got all sorts of login flow. It's got, check this out, I can even use an Apple password uh, uh, auto, uh, um, auto paste uh, for, for uh, autofill on passwords. So this is literally, as you saw, that was a matter of seconds. So within seconds, we were able to create a pretty good version of this. Um, and, you know, and, and I can actually spend a lot more time and go even more in depth and I should be able to actually show you another version of this. So here's one that I did just recently. Um, this was another version. And um, with this one, so this is the same website. It's just the one from last week. And I, was, I just did a couple extra layers of, of uh, um, queries. And as you can see here, I even added actual the individual pages, including investor relations. Um, and I did it in Yen. Um, and then I did a sustainability page, right? Um, and then I even actually went through and did news presses, right? Um, and so with this, again, and you can change the language of the site, it'll function just like a normal site. There's a couple little nuances here, and I can actually add that. So for example, the logo up in the top left is missing. Um, that can actually simply be added. I can just prompt it to add it later. So, but this is a, I think this, this actual, this, uh, it call it the enhanced site took me probably about five minutes. And again, the login portal works. And what's going to happen is as I fish someone, that login portal is going to send me in real time alerts of your username and password. And so I then can steal your username and password to your financial institution and use that against you. Um, and that would be a phishing attack. A man in the middle attack, which is the one that I that I talked about on the ladder, What's going to happen is we are actually going to funnel your login credentials, your username and password to the actual bank. So we can actually funnel that and, and attackers can funnel your username and password because what will happen is if someone new uses a new device and attempts to log in on your bank account, um, most banks, especially the good ones, they will identify that a new device or a new individual is attempting to log in and they will step that up. And they will step that up with a two-factor authentication, some form of MFA challenge. Um, and then what we can do is we can actually funnel that challenge through our fake website to you. So what will happen is we will use your credentials, your username and password. We will type it into, let's just say Chase or SMBC in this case. Uh, SMBC will know that I'm using a new device to log in. They will put a they'll they'll put a, pro, a prompt up that says we just sent you a, a two factor authentication. Please uh, uh, input the code. We will actually then prompt you, the customer, right, the the victim on our on our fraudulent website, saying please give us the code. Basically, we just sent you a two FA message. No. So now we have fully authenticated access to your bank once when you give us that code. Um, and you can imagine at you know six in the morning, seven in the morning, uh, before you had your coffee, that this would be really hard to catch. 
um, right? It would be very, very, very hard to catch. Um, and again, I, you know, if you spend an hour doing this, so you can make it look perfect. In some cases, it actually looks better than the original. Um, so that's an example right there of what uh, what AI can do to emulate actual fake websites. Then we'll go um, another layer deeper, and we're going to talk a little bit about, just bear with me here, I want to share a different screen now. Um, and we are going to talk about um, deep fakes and some of the tricks that some of the new AI is using to emulate faces, um, also to change facial features. And I'm going to use the facial feature one in real time. Um, I, you have to use something called a Python script in real time to emulate a face. That seems to not be loading effectively. So I'm going to show you one that I created uh, just recently. And just bear with me here. And we're going to move this to a new window so everyone can see it. And I didn't know about the the uh, funneling part. That's creepy as hell. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, because you know banks will see the the new device, right? Uh, and then they challenge that two factor authentication, and then before you know it, uh, you know that's how people originally were stopping these attacks, right? Is that we would say, hey, someone's trying to log into your account. You know, here's a code if you really want them to. Well, if we prompt you on that fake website in real time, right? Now we've got fully authenticated access to your account. Oh, yeah. No. So now we've so got they get, control right, of that. So they get the they get the notification, but then through the website, you know that's going to happen. So through the fake website, you prompt them to enter the code they just received, and so you enter the code, and then you use that to get into the real website. That is exactly right. Wow. So um, that's the that's the catch. And so can you all see this? The using uh -huh. uh, AI deepfakes. Yeah. So. Um, these are examples of uh, some really interesting uh, deepfake models. So the one in the top right is basically our CEO, Soups, um, and he is emulating our uh, chief product officer, Zahid. Um, and you can see the gray images on the left there of, you know, kind of the before and after. So what he should look like and what he looks like with Zahid. Um, and then in the bottom right, of course, that's a, a gentleman that is emulating Elon Musk. So this is an example of in real time, you can uh, deep fake people. Um, normally what you could do is you could just, all you have to do is you just take a screenshot of someone that you're talking to, you get it off of Facebook, like an image, for example, you get it off of previous uh, video recordings, anything of that sort. And that's all it takes. It takes one single image to do a deep fake. So in this case with Soups, he just literally took a screenshot of Zahid's face uh, in, a, in a meeting that we were on, and then he was able to emulate it and copy him. Um, and that same with, the, you can see in that bottom right, for example, the, the particular model that they're using to deep fake, that's just a, a public image of Elon Musk, and it looks pretty good. You can see the lighting, et cetera. Um, if there's a low bandwidth internet connection, sometimes it can be a little glitchy, and that's what you'll see with, with Soups. If you have a hardware acceleration and a much more, uh, much more, we call it a faster internet hookup, you can make it pretty, pretty smooth, as you can see in the bottom right. Um, and um, let me uh, stop sharing here. And here is another one, um, as you can see. These are uh, AI-generated identity documents. Um, so these are using different models. The one um, in the top right is actually still the same. It's still the same image. Ah, uh, thank you for thank you for telling me. Um, so uh, share this one. So these are real AI generated uh, documents. These are, um, interestingly enough, one of these is uh, is using ChatGPT. So mm -hmm. there's some really interesting attack vectors with um, a lot of these models that are in use of so these AI models. And the way it works is um, these models, these companies, um, OpenAI in particular, I would say is probably leading the charge for the most part on this. But what they are doing is they have pretty advanced logic controls to prevent people from using it for illicit reasons, um, right? So you have, for example, if you were to say, create me an exact copy of a United Kingdom passport um, and use my face and you know provide me uh, fake information, it won't do it. Um, however, you can get around the controls on some of these models. And one of the ways that you can do it is something called an emoji attack. And what an emoji attack is, um, is basically you're taking an emoji, let's just say like a smiley face emoji, <clears throat> 
and you are actually hiding a prompt in the emoji. So you're going in and you're saying, for example, create me a copy of a US visa or a US passport, use this information, this name, this date of birth, et cetera. You're putting it in micro font and you're actually hiding it, embedding it within that emoji. Then you're gonna to go to the model and instead of actually typing out that prompt of what you're trying to do, which will get flagged by the model and it won't produce it, the model will see that you just impl uh, inputted an emoji, but on the back end, it'll actually copy that information and present you the results. So that's how they're getting around a lot of these. Um, it, it's called an emoji prompt injection, for example. So that's where these these prompt injections are happening in the in the world. And so, as you can see, these are very sophisticated. These will get around uh, a, a majority of the industry's uh, controls. Um, so there is a lot on that side that's really interesting. Um, and then we can talk a little bit about also some of the interesting techniques um, that are being used in real time to help kind of hide characteristics. So that's a new trend that we're seeing right now. And um, what's really interesting about this trend is individuals are um, are instead of trying to completely deep fake someone, what they're doing is they're creating fake identities, fake documents, um, and then they're trying to change characteristics about themselves instead of completely change their identity. And the reason for it is it's much easier with uh, with hardware acceleration and even simple, like let's just call it a, a MacBook device, uh, to run in real time and make it look incredibly realistic. You can change facial characteristics. You can change all sorts of uh, information about yourself while still being you. So instead of your instead of completely trying to hide your identity, you're trying to change your characteristics. That way, the your real identity is protected, right? And so you can get through some of these controls. And as an example, I'm going to zoom in on my eyes here. Um, my eyes are actually not this color. I actually have that script running for this entire time. Um, and what I'm using is I'm using an effect here, and I'm going to show you what that effect looks like. And here we go, and I'm going to change my eye colors in real time, and right now I've got blue on, and so here is what my eyes look like without it. You see wow. the change? So <laughs> you, can make, you can make any change you want in real time, so I'll change this color here. You see the change colors? Yeah. Yep, so I can change minor characteristics, and as you can see, it's not glitchy, it looks perfect. Um, so there is uh, minor characteristic changes that you can do. I can change my facial structure. I can change, I can uh, add weight, I can reduce weight. So I can do a lot to try to get around some of these identity controls to make my current image look closer to someone's identity that I'm stealing, right? Mm -hmm. So I can change beard, beard characteristics. I can change uh, my eye shape. I can, I can make my face more narrow if I want to, as you can see now. Um, so I can change the weight of my body using these different AI tricks. Um, even on eyes, I can increase the size of my eyes. This one will look weird, but I'm doing it on purpose. So there you go, I increase the size of my eyes. So I can, when you combine all of this together, you can really uh, uh, kind of hide your true identity and get yourself closer to an identity that you're uh, really trying to steal, for example. And the reason why that there, this trend is starting to move in that direction is because as, as you can see, the technology is extremely advanced now to where that works in real time. It's highly effective. Um, the changes of appearance are incredibly good. Um, and in fact, it's so good that, like I said, I can actually just run the model the entire time while we're talking through the rest of this video. And I will have my eye color blue the rest of the time. And you, again, it's, it's incredibly accurate compared to none. Um, and so these are kind of the attack vectors that we're seeing just as a high level example. Wow. Snapchat meets know your customer. That's right. <laughs> Basically. That's right. The, the black hats have access to all these things. The white hats do as well. We're going to dig into the weeds here on our webinar in just one moment to show you how that all gets done. So this has been the demo. We'll be right back with our radio show. Stand by.